to rent or buy? That is a million dollar question. A lot of people that I speak to say they want to buy a home. They, they can't stand renting. Rent is too much. All this stuff. But there's two sides to every coin. Yes, you may want to own a home. But do you know what comes with home ownership? I'm going to give you both sides, the positive and the negative. Home ownership is great because you get something that I learned today called emotional return on investment. That is seeing your family grow within the place that you live, knowing your neighbors, a place that you just kind of plant yourself and just grow. And it's funny because I, I met this guy. He lived at this house and I was like, bro, getting up your driveway must be a nightmare every day. And he's like, nah, man, you get used to it. He's like, I could sell the house and move somewhere else, but I grew up in that house and so much memories I have in the house. When you own a home, you're looking to just settle down and just build memories. That's one thing to consider with home ownership. And when you are considering buying a home, think long-term. Can I see myself living in this area for 10 years? If you can't see yourself living there for 10 years, it's gonna cost you a lot. And when I say cost you, it's gonna cost you in terms of the moving cost, the cost that you put into the home over time, like that stuff adds up. Here are some costs that nobody tells you about and you kind of just discover on your own. First is you have the one-time cost. This kind of everybody puts out there, which is your down payment. They don't really mention closing costs, but closing costs is something you need to consider. And what's closing costs? Closing costs is like the lawyer fees, getting home inspections done, and maybe the cost of borrowing. Depending on how much you put down for your down payment, you may have to pay mortgage insurance. In Canada, they call that CMHC, which is BS, because it protects the bank. It doesn't protect you, <laughs> which is mind blowing to me. And that usually costs about 1% of the cost of the home. Closing cost is usually about 1.25% of the value of the home. You can double check with a real estate agent or, or a mortgage broker to get more information on this. I'm just going based off of my own experiences to let you guys know what to ask when you're in these situations or what to know when you get to these situations. Because when I purchased my first home, nobody told me about this stuff, not even the real estate agent. All they said is they need a down payment. I was like, oh, cool, I saved up, but they didn't tell me what happens when you, what, like at different levels, what your down payment can do for you. For example, in Canada, if your down payment is less than 20%, then you have to get CMHC, which is the mortgage insurance, which is BS. I was like, oh great, nobody told me about that. So I had to find, actually, not, not that I had to find, but what I was calculating for my mortgage, my monthly mortgage payments, ended up being more because of this stupid CMHC fee. That, that, that's not a one-time cost, but that's an ongoing cost that you would have to be paying that's like built into your mortgage. For the, for the one-time cost is just pretty much the closing costs and the, uh, the home inspections. Home inspections can get costly if like you keep jumping from place to place and you don't find a place that you like, depending on who your home inspector is. Some will be nice and give you a break. Others are just straight, I'll call them eggplants, and they just keep charging you like four or 500 bucks every time they go up, which is, it can add up over time, right? If you don't find that, that house that you want to call your forever home or at least for 10 years. Then you have ongoing costs. And this is something a lot of people don't consider. They just, I just got to pay my mortgage. Some are, are, are aware of property tax. And this is a property tax hack that I kind of like that you should all do and adopt. Build it into your mortgage. It takes off the, it takes the stress off of one, seeing that bill come in the mail and two, it, it gets paid on time because the, um, the mortgage provider pays it on your behalf. I think banks only do that. I'm not sure if uh, B lenders or private lenders do that. No, I don't think private lenders do that. So you'd have to pay it yourself. But it, it's, it's, it's such a stress reliever to just have it built into your mortgage. And if you have multiple payments for the year, it pays off. It pays the uh, property tax faster for you. Well, not faster for you, but it's uh, say if you have 
you do bi-weekly payments, that's 26 payments. You, you'll get like an extra payment. You're kind of overpaying for your property tax, which can roll over into the next year, which is great. I like that, that way of paying my property tax opposed to the bill coming and paying it. I hate seeing that bill come in and saying your property tax for the next year is three, four thousand dollars. F you. Like just build it into the damn mortgage because it's only like three, four hundred extra bucks depending on what your property tax is. And property tax is usually one percent of the value of the home, what they assess the value to be. It all depends on the area you live in, right? But these are things that you need to know before purchasing a house. I'm speaking to people that haven't ever purchased a home and know nothing about it. I'm speaking to you guys right now. And if you're finding value in this video, make sure to hit the subscribe button. Carrying on, property tax, that's one thing. The next thing is insurance. If you thought insurance, yes, you need homeowner's insurance. If anything happens, you need that homeowner's insurance. I've been in situations and I know people that have been in situations where their basement has flooded, their roof is leaking, um, their house has been broken into. And guess what? That insurance saved people. It saved me. It saved my mother-in-law. Her basement flooded and uh, she had to get the, the basement repaired and get the, I forget what they call it, but around the house needed to be resealed. That's like $25,000. Now, do you have $25,000 lying around to fix something like that? Probably not. Me, my house was burglarized and they literally trashed my place. They destroyed my walls. I don't know why, but they thought I was a drug dealer and they were asking me where's the money and I didn't have it. They just literally just came in. I don't know what gave them that idea. I work, or at the time I was working a full-time job and I just used to DJ. I don't know what gave them that impression that I was a drug dealer, but they were just asking me where's the money and I was like, I don't have money. But Moving forward, insurance covered the damage, fixed everything, and the stuff that they, they took, they, they reimbursed me for it. Well, some of the stuff, not all of it. That's why home or insurance is, is uh, good to have, is, or it's a must-have, not good to have, it's a must-have. Insurance on your home for damage, uh, theft, all that stuff. And make sure you read the fine print, because in some places, They'll give you the, the basic insurance, but it doesn't cover everything. So you wanna make sure it covers everything. Water damage, roof damage, hail, property damage. There's been times where people are like driving into people's houses and insurance ain't covering it. What the hell? You wanna make sure everything's covered. Like hurricane, uh, tornadoes, like even if you don't get those things. You never know. I've seen on the news, tornadoes in Canada and you're like what the hell we get tornadoes here and some people didn't get that insurance and now they have to come out of pocket and pay for those things if you don't have that type of money you definitely need to get insurance it's a lifesaver the other thing people don't account for is upkeep and repairs and maintenance things break down things need to be repaired and these are things that insurance doesn't cover and you should put at least anywhere from like two to five six percent of the value of your home each year away for things like that. I read this in a book and also this, this guy that does uh, home rentals told me to do this. And I was just like, why? And he's like, it just relieves the stress of having to fix something that breaks down. Say your fridge breaks down. You gotta go spend three, $4,000 on a fridge. Before you go to that credit card, having that money set aside is such a stress reliever. Because listen, if your fridge breaks down, you use your credit card, guess what? you're still gonna be stressed because now you gotta pay it off that credit card and pay the interest on that credit card. That's not something that you want. And think of it like this. If you don't have a plan of action to pay back that credit card, you're gonna end up paying interest on that credit card. And let's say it takes you five, six, not, let's say you don't even think about a repayment plan and five, six years pass and you're still paying off that debt. That debt also carries interest. Now you probably paid double for that fridge because you carried that interest for five years. That's crazy. Credit cards carry interest of 22, average 22% interest. And that's calculated daily. Have a plan of action to pay off that credit card if you have to use credit card debt. But the best thing to do is use, is to save up a portion, uh, save up a, uh, a specific amount each year. And if you don't end up using that money, I would suggest just keeping it 
in a high interest savings account until you do need that money. Say year one, you don't use it, but year two, you decide to change the vanity in your washroom. You have the money to do those things or you want to repaint the house. You have the money to do those things. You want to make sure you always have this available at disposal. Don't like just put it into something like crypto or you say, oh, I didn't use it this year, so I'm going to go buy, I'm going to go on vacation. When that, that emergency comes, you're going to really need that money. So just make sure it's always available when you need it. These are things that you got to account for when purchasing a home that a lot of people don't account for. I know this is videos long, but this is stuff that needs to be said. Your one-time cost, then you also have your ongoing costs. These are things that you need to be con to consider. So your one-time costs can range anywhere from, in Canada that is, anywhere from five to 20%. That's your down, that, that goes from your down payment to your lawyer fees, closing costs, all that stuff. That's your one-time cost. That can go anywhere from five to, to, sorry, five to like 20, call it like 23%, five to 23%. Then your, your, your ongoing cost can any, be anywhere from about three to like six, 7%. These things you wanna make sure that you account for when being a home owner. Also, keep in mind, you wanna be in a place for a minimum of 10 years. Five years is just like borderline, but think of it in this, this level. If you move every three years, now take in the cost of closing every time. When you sell a place, you're gonna have to pay the, uh, what's that thing called? The realtor commission. And that can be anywhere from like three to 6% because you gotta pay the buyer, the, the your realtor's fee and the buyer's realtor's fee. That's one thing that you gotta consider, the moving cost. All these things, th those are one-time costs, but those are things that you need to consider when moving. And all the money that you put into this property Let's say you don't even, your property doesn't sell for, it sells for the same price you, you purchased it at, or maybe a hundred thousand more. Consider all the costs that you put into that property. That hundred thousand, literally you spent that over time. Essentially you didn't make any, you didn't make anything extra on that property. You move from, you're moving, or if you did make money on that property, the new property that you're buying, you're essentially just rolling over it into the higher cost of that new property. You kind of want to try to avoid moving frequently when, when it comes to home ownership. Think long term for home ownership instead of short term. Now, renting, the pros and the cons. If you don't have a family and you live on your own, maybe renting is not the greatest. You're like, oh, condo, blah, 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 I still own something. Yes, condo, you can do that. If you do end up getting married, having children or a girlfriend, boyfriend, whatever, and you move out with somebody and you need a bigger space, guess what? You're gonna have to sell that place, costs associated with that. You're gonna have to move the moving costs and just picking up yourself and then planting yourself somewhere else. Remember, it's an emotional thing as well. It's not just a financial thing, right? Those are things that you need to consider when, uh, when purchasing a home. Maybe renting is better, it could be a better option for you. Like say your job is something where you're always traveling and you're, at, you're in different places for months upon, months upon months or months, however you say that. Say every six months you're, you're, you're moving to state to state or province to province or country to country. Then renting may be something for you. If you're like a freelancer or I forget what they call those other people that move all the time, maybe renting is better for you because now you can just pick up yourself and move. Maybe you only have two suitcases full of stuff that you carry with you every time. You can literally just pack up and move somewhere else and plant yourself, plant yourself somewhere else. That's the, the, the great thing about moving. Also, if something breaks down and it wasn't your fault, you don't have to fix it. That's your landlord's duty or the, the, the property management have to fix. It's like, hey, my, 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 my stove broke. They gotta replace that, not you. If something needs fixing, there's somebody there to fix it. Mind you, it wasn't your fault type of fixing it, right? So you don't have to do the, 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 the upkeep or the maintenance for your, your, your apartment or house that you're renting, right? That's all on the, the owner of the property. They got to do that stuff. That's a benefit of renting. The downside to renting is 
you're always paying market price. Your cost is not fixed. So if your landlord decides to increase your rent and you don't have a contract that locks in their, your rate, guess what? You're gonna have to pay that additional rate. It's the, the crummy part about renting. If you're somebody that is always like hop, skip, jump to place to place, then renting is the solution for you versus purchasing a home. If you're someone that's looking long-term, purchasing a home is a great decision. Now you may be saying, when is it time to move from renting to buying? There's three things that you need to consider. You need to consider yourself being at a place for about 10 years. You need to have stability in your relationship and your employment. And the third one, and the, th and the third one is, can I afford it? If you can't afford it, then you shouldn't be doing it. Don't force yourself where you can't fit. There's an old Jamaican saying, don't hang your, ha your hat where you can't reach it. Think of it like that. Don't put yourself in a predicament that you know that you're gonna be kicking yourself later. Oh my goodness, the mortgage is so high, oh the upkeep. Some people say having a mortgage or home ownership is like a part-time job. <clears throat> and it can be for those, for some, right? But just make sure that you're equipped for the home ownership before you do. And if you found value in this video, I have many more others like this as well where you can literally watch the Learn podcast where first you learn and then you earn. And thank you for tuning in.